Iron Man. Iron Man does whatever an iron can. His suit is cool, flies high. Technically, it's alloy. Look out! <laughs> Here comes Iron Man. Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys. Fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for film feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top-rated movies should be top-rated. I'm Vidur and I'm Vikram. Hi, Vikram. What's up, man? Ready for a special episode of Film Feud? Special. Wait, why special? It is special because we're not debating an IMDb top 250 movie. Okay. We're debating a Marvel movie that, you know, one might say has dominated at times more than most IMDb top 250 movies. Iron Man one, or Iron Man. the foundation of the mcu as we live and breathe the marvel cinematic universe started with this simple but effective blockbuster from 2008 simple but effective interesting oh am i revealing uh, my yeah, thoughts on it yet anything you say before we get into it why don't you tell the good folks some new listeners we might have what we're doing here for sure so we take a movie toss a coin heads argues for and tails argues against simple simple enough i am pretty pumped and pretty nervous about this one For one thing, let's just put our cards out a little bit. Wait, wait, wait! You put your cards out. Don't no, tell no. me what to do. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm collective nouning this because okay. uh, I won't do it if you don't. Okay, I'm probably won't. No, you must. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, we have watched all the Marvel movies. Yeah. So what? We watch them. Listen, they don't all have to be great. They're not all stellar. They're mostly not all stellar. And none of them are interstellar. Oh wow! How deep did you dig for that one? I dug pretty deep. Really? My point is, before we get too wayward here, we watch the Marvel movies. We like some of them. We dislike some of them. Iron Man one, I haven't seen for a while. I'm not comfortable with you collective nouning this. I Why? Just, I'm not. Do you not watch all the Marvel movies? No, everything after that. We like some of them. We don't like some of them. Okay. Why don't we talk about Iron Man? Did you watch it in theaters when it came out? I don't remember honestly. You don't remember watching it in theaters? I remember watching it in theaters. I was pleasantly surprised because who the hell was Iron Man before this? Actually, I want to say I did not watch it in theaters. Now, oh, quite an experience, quite an experience. You know, for its time, it came out the same year as Dark Knight. Hmm. So that I did watch in theaters. Big superhero movie year that was. Yeah. And I was a comic book reader when I grew up. I had this crazy subscription, man. A thousand rupees I paid for a year, but these are like a thousand ninety ninety nine rupees, so they're probably worth a lot more now. And I used to get ten comics a month for a year for a thousand rupees. I just used to go to our common friend, borrow comics from him whenever I wanted to. So free. Oh wow, free comics are better than most comics. But within all the comics that I read, I thought DC was better than Marvel. I always felt that way. And now the MCU obviously has changed the perception of that. So why don't we begin this exploration of the MCU and feud Iron Man? Why don't we get to the coin toss? Let's do it. So I'll be tossing the coin. Heads is for and tails is against. After that, you guys, our good listeners, get to decide who you think won the feud. You can vote on our social media handles. That's Muncher Movies on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, or you can find us on our website, MuncherMovies dot com. You can also check out our YouTube channel, Muncher Movies, and let us know who you think won in the comments. With that, should we get the coin toss? No, no stakes here. No big deal. Let's just see what happens. Let's go. And I got tails. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm excited. You need me to call an ambulance or something, man? I'm just excited. I'm happy. I had kept my cards close to my chest about this movie in particular. Kind of did not. I love <laughs> this movie. That was pretty evident from the get go. Oh, okay. What about you? How scared are you? I'm not scared at all. I'm never scared whenever I need to feud a Marvel movie. Really? Yep. You're doubling down on the Marvel hate, not just this movie. No, I'm saying a lot of Marvel movies are extremely, extremely feudable. When was the last time you watched this movie? I want to say at some point in the past three years. Okay. Why? Why did you watch this movie again if you don't like it? 
I consume a lot of content which I don't like. Like otherwise, there's not much content. You should out there. evaluate your life then, because <laughs> I don't understand why you would do that. You know what? No need to plan. Why don't we just get to it? I'm excited to rewatch this movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, and you know what? You know, after watching Infinity War and all the latest MCU movies, I'm very curious to take a look back at where it all started. Same. Okay, let's go. Let's go watch the movie. Let's do it. Dude, that was so good. That was so good. How does Iron Man, the 2008 movie, hold up? That was so good. You think it holds up? Of course, the special effects hold up. This is the movie that gave birth to it all. It's like it's like the it's like the creator. It's like the god of all the other Marvel movies. Calm the down, greatest man. franchise in cinematic history. The world we live in today would be less joyful if it wasn't for Gandhi and this movie. Gandhi. I don't know. Just if it were Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, and this movie. Weird comparables for some reason. Uh, I don't think this movie had that much CGI. That's great. What not standard? This was mind blowing 2008 stuff that is no. translated into mind blowing 2018 and beyond stuff. By the way, while watching it, I was super pumped, mm-hmm. and uh, I wrote a little ode to this movie. An ode? I'm curious. Uh, a little limerick. Okay. Should I just just spell it out? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Because I'm about to sing. <laughs> I cannot wait for this, honestly. Just as a personal experience as well. I don't do concerts much, so I don't know how this goes. No, but it's fine. Just take your best shot. If you feel like taking out your lighter and, and singing it around don't, or, don't worry or about joining it. me. I'm your hype man through this. Don't worry about it. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yes. Are you sure? Extremely. Okay. okay just give me a moment here. A little, yeah, mental. Okay. <clears throat> Iron Man. Iron Man. Does whatever an iron can. His suit is cool, flies high. Technically, it's alloy. Look out! <laughs> Here comes Iron Man. Oh, okay, okay. I'm absorbing. I'm absorbing. Anything else? No, I'm done. Are you sure? Because I need, I need like a second to absorb. If you have more, then I'll okay, know. I do have more. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Is he strong? Listen, champ. His heart's a radioactive lamp. Can he swing from a thread? He can fly. Use your head. Look out. Here comes the Iron Man. In the heat of the sand at a terrorist site. With the blast from his hand, he can win any fight. Iron Man, Iron Man, this is where it all began. Phase one of the MCU, he's the leader of the crew. To him, life's a great big bang up. Whenever there's a hang up, you'll find the Iron Man. Thank you. Thank can I, you. Can I clap? I'm here all week. Can I clap, man? Seriously? Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. Far too kind. Jesus. That was that was excellent. Thanks. Just like the movie. This movie organically just produced this in me. It's just that I didn't have the talents to put an original composition. I had to borrow from another part of the Marvel Universe, right. a.k.a. the Spider-Man right. song. Well yeah. Amazing. What a movie. Movie aside, this has nothing to do with the movie. Of course it what does. A composition, man. Thanks, man. I'm still lolling in my head about the swinging on a thread, use your head. That was that was excellent, dude. Like, such the, the writing there. Oh, it just made it spit out of me. The, the genius should, of this movie. You should become a writer for the MCU. They definitely need some. Oh, screw you. Mm-hmm. By the way, this, uh, this ode was dedicated to uh, John Favreau, the creator of it all. Why? Because look what he created, man. He, he set the tone for Marvel... For and the MCU, for the greatest franchise ever created, for this $10 billion empire. Tony Stark tone he created. MCU, like, quippy, quippy, quip tone he created, which has worked. The MCU formula, which sometimes we hate on, he created. Genius. I think Favreau had nothing to do with Tony Stark's tone here. Dude, the Tony Stark saturation in the first 10 minutes is so annoying. It's character setting. That's the character that's going strip to change. A po- strip a pole on a plane. That happens in the middle of the movie, and that's classic. Stripper pole on a plane. It's a classic. That's not a classic. I I want to see what your definition for classic. He's is. a playboy. He's a genius playboy who realizes weapons are being used for bad. But but Robert Downey, I think I think a lot of people junior give, junior a lot of people give praise to Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of this character Tony Stark. How it's so him, and you know how it perfectly fits into it. He was born to play Tony Stark. Big whoop, dude. He's He's just playing himself. He's not doing anything. So what? He plays the same character in Sherlock Holmes. So what? 
He's not acting. There's, there's nothing but Tony Stark's character. There, it has so much source that's material. That's even better. That's like Daniel Day Lewis stuff right there. He's not acting. He's just him. No, that's actually the complete opposite of Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis acts in every separate movie. It's not like he plays the same guy over and over again. Tony Stark, because of the comics and because of the character written by Stanley and uh, his brother, I think, who wrote the character. It has so much characterization already fleshed out in the comics, and he's actually the only character that that has, you know, this vibrant sort of character arc. That there's nothing special these guys did in the movie. It was so they adapted it faithfully. That's not a bad thing, is it? I don't think they did that good a job, especially Tony Stark and or Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of Tony Stark. There was nothing special there. There was nothing. Robert. There was his facial hair. That was very special facial hair. That's unique. Now, Tony Stark has that facial hair. They didn't do anything unique there. Dude, come on. Robert Downey Jr. was born to play the playboy side of things anyway, right? And then when he learns some responsibility and has this sort of awakening when he's in the cave, then his character arc becomes really strong. He comes back. He retains the quirks of his character. He doesn't overgo like some monk transformation. He's still him. He's still funny. He's still a playboy. He just becomes someone who cares about what he's doing to the world. And he starts using his weapons for good and makes the best weapon of all time. And, you know, just uh, just points his genius towards things beyond money. That's great. That's like a real world. You know, the thing I like the most about this movie, it's set in the real world. And the future MCU movies, not so much. They built a universe out of it. This movie could happen in our world. That's awesome. I don't think this could happen in, in the real world. The only guy who comes close to Tony Stark is probably Elon Musk. And I'm pretty sure he's not flying around in a space suit. Just give it a couple of years, man. He's getting there. Flamethrowers have already happened. That's going to be the blaster. Everything else will come. Yeah, I guess. And also just like talking again about the real world, the 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 first, the sort of, the, the character arc development of Tony Stark when he's kidnapped and held at ransom to create a Jericho missile for the terrorists in Afghanistan. Those terrorists aren't real world terrorists, dude. Why? Firstly, language. The head terrorist who is supposedly the Osama guy, except he's bald and doesn't have a beard. Speaks Shud Hindi. Who decides he's the Osama guy? Because he's the head of the terrorist legion in Afghanistan. You're projecting Osama, as you always do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm going I'm to tone down on that. But that guy speaks Shud Hindi. Pure Hindi in Afghanistan. That was a little gift for us. For also, us. Also, also like uh, the guy who's uh, uh, Tony's prison mate, the scientist guy who's helping him out build the suit. Call him by his proper name, you monster. I've already forgotten it. His name is Yinsen and he's from the comics. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yinsen. He sacrifices his life. You know, he doesn't get enough credit in the MCU. Yeah, yeah, he's the he's the guy who made Tony realize his, his parting dialogue was, oh, become a better man, oh, whatever. And he, it's completely forgotten because it's not relevant anymore. No, he should have been in the Endgame trailer with the cave scene. Yeah. He's like, to Yinsen. The movie, the Endgame should be dedicated to Yinsen. <laughs> yeah. He gave up his life. Dude, that guy, uh, Yinsen actually has a line in the movie where he... Uh, sort of explains how many languages these guys speak, the terrorist uh, group. And he doesn't he doesn't say Hindi. Except the head terrorist speaks pure Hindi. What? Firstly, it could be Urdu. You don't know that. It's pure Hindi. Why are you digging deep into also, a nitpick? O- also, incidentally, the pure Hindi guy also speaks pure English. Have the nitpicks really begun so early? Do you have so little to actually point out, oh, Tony Stark wasn't good, and then immediately move on to nitpicks? Come on, man. Get your act together. What are you doing? <laughs> Where's that coming from? It feels personal. <laughs> How dare you hate on this movie? It's very, very hateable, man. I, I, like I, what? Okay. This movie doesn't hold up firstly. Like, I, I, What part? Anything. Anything about this movie doesn't hold up. And I'm Give gonna, me specifics. I will. When I give you specifics, you cry about nitpicks. When I give you generalized things, you want specifics. Okay, tell me why it doesn't hold up. I will tell you why, why it doesn't hold up. But from a general broader perspective, right? Like how many movies have there been in the MCU now? Over 20 as of this recording. Over 20. So that's a lot. And this was the first movie. So I just wanted to not take into account the rest of the MCU because that's not going to be fair to this movie. Okay. But I wanted to just gauge whether this movie holds up in today's time. It's been almost 11, 12 years since this movie came out. If this movie came out today, it would be a super hit. It would actually make more money than it did that year. I actually, actually disagree with you. If this movie came out today, it would be a different movie. They, they'd have a bigger sort of villain. They'd have a bigger boss fight. They'll Agreed. Have, they'll have more CGI, more explosions and stuff like that. Isn't so that this, great that it's a little contained? No, it's not. It actually sucks. This Come on, movie, dude. If this movie as is was released today, it would not do well at all. 
it would pull back the MCU more than what, anything. What do you want? You want like a giant sky beam and like a Wonder Woman style fight at the end? If, if you don't have a good story, if you don't have good characters, good plots and all of that, then sure, at least give me that and make it entertaining for me, man. It's not even fun to watch. It's just like, blah. Dude, the special effects of this movie hold up. How cool is that? Like the All fu- the special effects are just Iron Man flying around. Dude, this is an origin story, right? The only thing that's comparable is like Spider-Man 1 and Batman Begins. And those movies, I mean, Spider-Man had its pros and cons. Batman Begins, which was the closer one to in terms of release date, what a drag. This movie has joy. It's not joyless. The actual him inventing his suits in the cave first, Mark 1, then Mark 2. Those special effects still hold up, dude. Like, when he's flying against the F-22 Raptors, it looks so photorealistic legit for 2008. And I think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that it was practical. I saw the making of this movie. He's actually wearing a suit most of the time. Now he doesn't. Now the suit is obviously CGI. Also, just like the comics, they've taken the suits to the next level. So now he has nanotech. And I actually think it looks quite fake. So the special effects in this movie are actually, to me, superior to the Iron Man special effects in almost any movie that followed. But it's also 2008. It's not like special effects didn't exist. These guys, in terms of where 2008 was regarding special effects, didn't really push the bar or push the limit that much. Like, we're post-Matrix, man. And Matrix? Come on, dude. This is photorealistic real world. This is a grounded comic book movie with special effects. Batman Begins was a grounded drama. Like, it barely needed special effects, so there was nothing to it. And Nolan hates them anyway. This was the best of both worlds. John Favreau really put it together. To me, the special effects of Iron Man flying around in a suit are very akin to special effects used in Spider-Man webbing his way around New York City. It's pretty much the same thing, and they did it pretty much the same way. So it's not like this was extra special or anything That looks like that. green screen, dude. Come on. It is. It, it's possible. And also, Spider-Man came out way, way before this movie did. So in terms of where this movie stood in, in time, 2008, there's nothing special they did with CGI, did they? He's flying. He holds on to an F-22 Raptor. What do you want from a movie? Jeez. Jaded much? Can we move on? I don't even I don't even know why we're discussing special effects because there was just so little. Let's talk about the story, all right? You know, like people come across movies that, oh, the third act wasn't that strong or the second act was boring and all of that. Just because all this Iron Man, Tony Stark, character arc stuff was so front-loaded in this movie, it actually it actually raised or it actually created a rarity. And the rarity being the first act of this movie is the only good act in the movie. The second and third act were just there because they had to stitch a story together and complete it. The second act is him creating the suits. That's the most fun part. It's whatever, man. It's it's not it's not like special or it's not like fun or anything. The, the actual story, the gripping part of the story was the first act where he's in the cave, he realizes what his company is doing irresponsibly, how he wants to change it, therefore creates that prototype of the suit and the whole... What's the scientist's name, name again? Yinsen. Yinsen. Yinsen telling How him. Dare you. I'm sorry, Yinsen, man. Like, great, great stuff, but I forget your name. It's weird. And the, the second and third act are so, so bleh, man. The, 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 the evil guy in this movie, the antagonist in this movie is goddamn Jeff Bridges. I love Jeff Bridges. You know that. Obadiah Stane. I'm never going to hate on the guy, but the character, man, the, the story, the script of the, the characterization of Obadiah Stane is so stupid. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't afraid of him. I wasn't scared. It's the weakest boss fight ever, by the way. No, it's not. Firstly, it's 2008. I mean, what was the boss fight in Batman Begins? Nothing. What Why was... do you keep comparing it to Batman Begins? Because... Just because it's another superhero movie. I understand that. But they're completely different movies, right? Yeah, but Iron Man is a game-changing superhero movie. That's what I'm trying to point out. Yes, the boss fight became formulaic. But the boss fight here is a little contained. Tony actually doesn't even defeat him. He gets defeated by Jeff Bridges, a.k.a. Obadiah Stane, building a better suit. Iron Monger, this movie has an Iron Man suit and an even better Iron Man suit within the first movie itself. Oh, it's like, a, oh, it's like 30% bigger in size. Boo. Yeah, and scarier and <laughs> better in every other way. <laughs> really? It's just, it's like, it's like Oberyn Martell fighting the, the mountain dude. That, okay. High praise, my that's, friend. That's high not, praise. That's not a superhero boss fight. A that's superhero awesome. boss fight is something complete, like... Okay, I'll come I'll come back to Batman Begins. The Batman Begins boss fights like grander in scale, the whole subway destruction, Wayne Tower and all that stuff. There's so much happening there. Here's just like two guys fighting on a roof. That's it. That's pretty much it. That's amazing. They they're, they're not just on the roof, they fly up. He fixes the ISIS icing problem, which is a callback from <laughs> early in the movie. He fixes the ISIS problem as well midway through the movie with the terrorist and he goes and like screws them up. The boss fight is awesome. Let's just talk about the acts, though, right? I think the second act is key. The second act is, like, as part of the hero's journey. Now he's decided he's going to do something, and he does something. And the challenges that come in a way, you know what I'll grant you is that he achieves it too easily, but that's what he is. He's 
he's a, he's a genius. He's the smartest person on earth. And this is what he decides to do with his genius. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I didn't feel it, honestly. Um, I thought I would feel it more uh, because when I when I went into this uh, this recent viewing, I thought that, you know, the whole Iron Man side of things would be really well fleshed out, would be very powerful. But I was pretty disappointing. And, you know, just few decide, I just wanted to ask you something. Why do you think Obadiah Stane is not mentioned in the MCU at all? beyond this movie or is this something that just drowned out because of the many things of uh, he's done he's gone yeah he was essentially Howard Stark's right hand man right so coming back to this Obadiah Singh character and Jeff Bridges mm -hmm. goddamn Jeff Bridges legend, firstly legend, awesome. I agree legend. with you yeah. Paul Bridges game changer mm -hmm. the guy decides to shave his head he must have really committed he rides in to the office in a suit smoking a cigar on a segue, mm. who else but Jeff Bridges could pull that off like a boss? Jeff Bridges, in terms of what he brings to the table whenever you sign him for a movie, is guaranteed, always. And he it brought is, it. Obviously, he brought it. Like, in terms of acting, in terms of him trying to push whatever the words and the scripts enable him to do, he does that very successfully, always. Okay, so then it's Obadiah just... staying the character, it's clear, right? His motivation is that he would have gotten to take over Stark Enterprises. It's like a Game of Thrones. He wants to, he's like the little finger. He wants to kill the prince and take over the throne. Yeah, his motivations are very plain to see. Like, there's no, there's, there's no confusion there. That's not what my point it's is. It's still a reveal when it's re revealed that he did it. It's still not sure, something that was obvious. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that. He's just granting me everything. I won the feud. Thanks. <laughs> in terms of his character, it's not powerful. I'm not, when, when I'm looking at a superhero antagonist, I need to feel that emotion that, oh my God, this dude is scary. Or, oh my God, that guy's going to F him up or something like that. With Obadiah Stane, even when I, even post reveal, when I know he's after, eventually after a point, you know that he's going to get into the Ironmonger suit and Iron Man and Ironmonger are going to face off, right? It's pretty evident in the movie, especially when he steals uh, Tony's arc reactor heart and puts it in the suit. Or as I called it in my little ode, the radioactive lamp. The radioactive lamp, yeah. So you know that fight's coming. And then when that fight eventually comes, which is pretty much the highlight of all superhero movies, it's so weak, man. It's not the highlight of this movie. The highlight of this movie can be whatever you want. You said it was a cave. I think it's the building of Mark II and his little robot friend. And by the way, have we spoken about Jarvis? Uh, so Tony has real AI, which is pretty exciting. You know, they show that in the movie. That was right. kind of the first time they show that. Mm -hmm. They show all the cool holographic scenes, the way he and builds the, the suit. Yeah. Yeah. Great Isn't stuff. that exciting? Yeah. I mean, anyway, that was my highlight. So I don't think the third act needs to be the highlight. You seem to just want a Wonder Woman, the movie style, Wonder Woman versus Ares, the god of war, stupid sky beam CGI driven showdown, which this movie was just not interested in. John Favreau was just too good for it. Not a fan of Wonder Woman boss fight, also. Just yeah, you are. Way. Just from yeah. the sounds of it, you no. are. You just want it. <laughs> <Okay>. Look at you. <laughs> I don't know. You can't just force that on me, man. But I bet you love the DC movies more than Marvel. No, I don't. I actually think DC is doing a pretty shit job. Even though overall, I think the DC universe is much better than the Marvel universe. But Marvel... <gasps> How dare you? You don't? Wait, you mean the comics or the movies? Generally, the universe. What universe? The DC EU or the DC comics? Not the movies, not the comics, but the DC universe. You mean the DC characters and the universe? Yes, yes. Yeah, the comics are kind of better. So what? The movies are better than Marvel. No biggie. That's what I said. You're agreeing with me. Is he strong? Listen, champ. Is that radioactive lamb? Look out... You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this just this snippet from the recording and set it as my ringtone. Can he swing from a thread? <laughs> he can fly. Use your head. That was so good, man. So good. There's a reason, man. There's a reason this movie is loved as it is today. This movie is like above ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. This movie made Disney buy Marvel. What more do you want? What more validation do you want? Rotten Tomatoes. Seriously, are you going there? Big warp, dude. Ant Man and the Wasp is eighty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Great movie. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't know what's going on, man. You know what? A Paddington two, hundred percent. Apparently the best movie of the year. Paddington 2? Apparently it was the best critically rated movie of the year. I can't wait to see it. I have read Paddington books, by the way, to my young niece. She's three years old. She loves Paddington to death. I did not see that coming, by the way. Paddington 2. Paddington is a bear. I know. Who lives in London. Okay. And he loves his aunt. Okay. Okay. And he just wants to just do anything to please his aunt. Are you talking about Paddington 2 in depth right now? 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So what's wrong with that? It's not 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Have you watched it? Yes. You watched Paddington too? Yes. I have a niece. Didn't I just mention that? Wait, you watched the movie? Yeah. I thought you just read the book. No. So how was it? Not 100%. <laughs> That's it? That's your argument here? Yeah. So I'm just saying Rotten Tomatoes don't know. Shite. 90 whatever percent this is doesn't count for anything, man. What does count? Feelings. Yeah. The feelings were top notch. Top feeling this movie had. Speak for yourself, man. Come on, man. I'm very disappointed. Honestly, like few decide also. I'm super disappointed. You know what really gave me the feelings, by the way? The music. Really? Dude. 
first i'm sure you love this you're a rock and yeah, metal fan i just don't like it when it's used like iron man the song is iconic okay don't read into the lyrics but using it as the ending riff how badass was that you could use anything else okay literally there are a thousand badass riff riffy songs out there use anything else why use iron man did you like the immigrant song in ragnarok yes i think that fit very well because yeah. they use it mid scene Here they use it as ending credits, or they didn't use it as part of the movie. But like the lyrics don't apply to Ragnarok either. He just happens to say "Hammer of the Gods" and "Valhalla." Yeah, but it has nothing to do with Thor. Yeah, but they actually used it live action. It actually fit really well. Like they try to use um, "Back in Black" by ACDC, the, like the first scene of this movie. Yeah, that's just like a the, it's, it's a pumped a scene, up opening. It's a scene setter, right? That would have been dependent on how much money they are able to pay. Dude, the music is still iconic today. It was good enough, and you know Marvel gets a lot of hate for not having that good. background scores and original scores as part of their movies and the soundtracks this movie was kind of the exception for the next 5 6 years until they got their act together man it was so good you can still recognize iron man based on the music that's awesome i guess you can but repetition has a lot to do with that as well if i have three movies of iron man and six movies are iron man's in then if i hear that theme like 100 times obviously but you only get nice. six movies of the first one's good my friend with some exception fast and furious and others <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time you only get six movies of the, dude it started it all what more do you want and you know the the thing about this movie that i like is it kind of took into account that the universe was starting so they didn't feel the need to rush stuff a good example of that any other superhero movie or movie in general they when they set up like a girl love interest it needs to lead to them getting together right here they barely flirt and it's like all over so because they know they're going to set it up they actually end up doing an iron man 2 or you know the fact that rody says like i'm going to wear that suit one day or next whatever time, he says baby. next time poor guy didn't get a next time by the way can we talk about terrence howard for a moment yeah i guess what happened there uh, he just wanted more money i think or at least that's the pr whatever i don't okay. know who to believe but i think he felt he was entitled to more money because he's terrence howard and don chilo was like i don't care i'm good <laughs> I'm and now he's riding that wave yeah, dude he's yeah. like one of the leftover avengers for end game yeah i look i give this movie um not this the this the work here but this movie as as like a lot of respect because it did spawn the mcu it's something that Aha. we've never seen let me complete right say i concede first no i don't so it spawned the mcu which is something that we've never seen in 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 cinematic history right like this this sort of spawn of 20 plus movies which over for, only 10 years over only 10 years which for the foreseeable future have been planned out to to sustain so this has never happened before and iron man was the starting point of it i i give it respect in that sense but this movie is not the reason for all of that to start by that what i mean is that if iron man would have been captain america 1 or thor 1 or something that mcu would still no be, way uh, yeah, no course, way 100%. no way Dude, those movies they did come out, right? The Incredible Hulk came out two months after this movie, right? And it didn't work. And thankfully, Marvel was nimble enough to just kind of like push it to the side until the Avengers and they recast Hulk. And Captain America and Thor, they both kind of dull compared to Iron Man. The think about it: the theme of Captain America, the first Avenger, theme meaning thematics and vibe, and the thematics of Thor, which was too Shakespearean, made by Kenneth Branagh, you know, proper Shakespearean director. There's a reason the tone in the Marvel universe didn't follow that direction. They just realized that you know, fun quips like turmoil within the character, but like action outside, that's what works. So that's why this gets credit. And you know, it's, it's small things, man, like that helmet cam view of Iron Man still dominates, like in Avengers movies. They got so much right the first time. So you were giving credit. I don't want to stop your concession. I just wish you'd call it a concession. all that still sustains and is because of iron man i'm saying that if iron man wouldn't have worked as well as it did for example mc was still happening mc would have they would have taken a shot with thor a few years later they would have taken a shot with captain america a few few years later and the mc would still come into play it would still become a thing it's not like iron man was the sole reason mc became a thing Iron Man just helped it along. Most people would disagree with you, man. It is. I mean, that's like with anything, right? Like you have to start somewhere, and then that's what should get credit for it. Talking about which, we have to talk about the birth of the post-credit scene. Not the first movie to do it, but the first movie to do it consistently and build a universe from it. Nick Fury appears in Iron Man, 
And then Iron Man appears like two months later in The Incredible Hulk. And that's it, bro. We were off to the races. Every MCU movie since has had post credit scene. They've changed the game in movies. Eventually, DC had to cave, which was so sad. I remember going to watch BVS, mm -hmm. which kind of sucked anyway. And then waiting for a post credit scene and nothing came as like a stance that DC was taking, like we're not Marvel. Right. And then the very next movie, they're like, we, we're sorry, we're sorry, we cave. We'll give you a post credit scene. And every MCU movie obviously does it so well to tie in the universe. MCU's a force, dude. There's no denying that, for sure. Obviously, it has ripple effects on generally the Hollywood industry and obviously its main competitor, which is DC movies right now. It's definitely a force, but I feel like you're giving or people just generally give this movie too much credit for all of that happening, which according to me, a force that big will come into being regardless. I don't think so, man. This was the reason. You know what? Marvel, the movie studio, didn't have access to Spider-Man, didn't have access to the Fantastic Four and didn't have access to the X-Men. And they made the MCU the biggest movie franchise there is. Mad props to it. I bet even Stanley is amazed with what they've done. Because even Stanley knew his most popular character. Spider-Man was number one by far. Fantastic Four, even though not number one because the movies always suck. You know the MCU in the comics, the Marvel Universe in the comics, the, what Iron Man and Tony Stark do in the current MCU, Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four do in the comics. So the fact that you can create this Marvel Universe without them, without having those Fantastic Four assets and stories to rely on, incredible, man. And it all comes down to this movie. Stop it, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of this whole Iron Man's the reason of the MCU and stuff like that. I do not believe it at all. Let's just... Are we done? Let's just end the feud. Okay. Um, you have two options. I can sing you out with my ode, which I've done already. Or I can give you an, an Iron Man dad joke. Since I have the recording for the singing already, and I'm going to be listening to it a million times, uh, why don't you just throw the joke at me? Sure. What do you call Iron Man when he takes off his suit? What? Stark naked. And that wraps up this episode of Film Feud. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Now we feud it, and you, our listeners, get to decide who you think won. As we mentioned, you can go and vote on our social media. That's at Muncha Movies on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can show some love on our YouTube channel, Muncha Movies. You can also find us on our website, munchamovies.com, or wherever you get your podcasts, like CastBox, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Casts. Just look us up. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Vikram, are we doing a postcard scene? Sure. Now what? Well... I guess one of us has to be Nick Fury. Ooh. Well, how's your Samuel Jackson? Not it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stark. No. What? Are you are you Mr. Smith from the uh... Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Um, um, what's an iconic Sam Jackson line? Get these mother snakes off the mother plane. <laughs>